This is breaking news, an early edition of KCAL News at 8 o'clock. We have a police pursuit of a driver wanted for assault with a deadly weapon and armed robbery. I'm Jeff Vaughn. Good evening, everyone. I'm Susie Sell, along with Mike Rogers at the desk. Let's go upstairs now to Desmond Shaw, live in SkyCal for an update for us. Desmond. Uh, Jeff and Susie, uh, we just heard here from the airship overhead. They believe there are three people in the car believed to be armed and dangerous because of the wants. Again, it is either armed robbery and or assault with a death. Uh, that according to LAPD. It is LAPD that is in pursuit of this vehicle, this dark, older model GMC Yukon. Again, believe to be three in the car. This began in the South LA area, uh, came eastbound on the 10, and then South 5, South 710. And now we're making our way towards Long Beach, getting up to uh, 80 or 90 miles an hour on this one. It has kind of been flying away from us, so we're still trying to catch up here. But you can see, I'll just widen out for a second, quite a few units uh, in tow of this one. And actually, there were two law enforcement helicopters as well. It's going to be LAPD as well as LA County Sheriff's deputies. We'll see if they continue to have two from the sky, uh, which would definitely make you think that they really want to get these suspects. Again, possibly armed the dangerous three in the car of this uh, GMC Yukon southbound on the 710 with uh, LAPD. Jeff and Susie. Okay, yeah, this is breaking news here on KCAL News, and uh, thank you so much for joining us as we get off the top of the hour with this police pursuit. As Des just mentioned, Sheriff's Department, LAPD also in pursuit. Mike Rogers is now at the assignment desk. Can you clear up a little bit of, as to the want here, Mike? Yeah, so Jeff and uh, Susie, it was just, you know, Desmond mentioned, you know, either armed robbery or assault with a deadly weapon. Well, we believe it is both, really. So armed robbery was originally what these Newton officers, it was officers from LAPD's Newton Division, got behind the vehicle now, during the course of the pursuit, we've heard the helicopter ask the ground units, do we know which seat the shooter is sitting in? So that leads us to believe, obviously, that the assault with a deadly weapon aspect of it. And then we also heard them give some details about it. And this was actually a shooting I was listening to on the scanners uh, during our 5 o'clock hour. It was over at San Julian and Pico. It came out as a shooting with a possible victim down. So I was actually making some calls on that when we had to go to a different shooting. Uh, and they uh, obviously have picked up this person at some point. So now they're trying to get him to stop. But again, that shooting happened at San Julian and Pico, and they are trying to figure out which seat in the car the shooter is sitting in or if it's the driver. So uh, as far as the armed robbery portion of it, it's very possible that that car, the license plate on the car came back to being also wanted in an armed robbery, but we, we believe the primary reason they are chasing this person was for that shooting that we were listening to at San Julian and Pico earlier. And that, that shooting, Mike, was in South LA, and that's where this pursuit started? Correct, yeah. This started in, you know, my, uh, one of my coworkers on the desk, Orlando, was actually giving Desmond some clarifying information. Central Division officers were the ones uh, who originally got into this, and then Newton was right on their tail. Central and Newton, uh, if you don't know, border each other. So uh, it's right there where the 10 freeway splits. They get Newton gets a little bit north of the 10 freeway. So both of those guys were trying to do this at the same time. And actually, they asked everybody to switch over to Newton frequency. Now, as Desmond pulls out, they have repeatedly added units to this pursuit. We're almost getting into the Long Beach area now, but I had heard them request at least six units mm. to be in the pursuit. It looks like there may be even more than that. The airship also offered to go into tracking mode. The watch commander denied tracking mode. Uh, and that is common when you have a, a suspect wanted for this caliber of alleged crime armed, things like that. They don't like to go into tracking mode. They're also now, you know, in, in and out of their city. They also don't like to be in tracking mode when they're not in their city. So right now, not in tracking mode. This is full-blown pursuit by the LAPD, who also has not given it up to CHP. Oh, oh, oh he's losing it. Oh, oh he's losing it. Take it, Des. Curve. Take it, Des. Uh, it was Lamped all... into the divider there. Oh. Wow. Wow, you know what? Driving a top heavy vehicle here, took it too fast and jumping over. So we're just at the end of the 710 on the exit that goes towards downtown LA. And we have one suspect out of the vehicle and running. Uh, we're gonna follow that suspect because we believe that there might be two other people in the car. I don't think I saw them get out of the car. So he just hopped over there uh, down onto Golden Avenue and 4th Street, getting down into this neighborhood. It's uh, one of the, you know, again, they have two airships on this one. So one of them can break off and stick with this suspect who's now running here down the street. Uh, let's see where this person goes, if this is somewhere they were meaning to go or what the deal is, but out on foot. Uh, I believe this is the driver uh, that, that uh, is out of the vehicle here running, Jeff. Yeah, very know. desperate mm -hmm. times for this driver as he's attempting to uh, escape 
uh, after uh, getting out of this vehicle. And Susie, he lost control in that yeah. overpass. As Des mentioned, those SUVs are top heavy. He was going a little too fast and just kind of flipped it around. Yeah. Two other people, we believe, inside the vehicle. This one outstanding. That's right. Multiple people, as you're talking about, Mike Rogers was asking or talking about how multiple LAPD units were being added to this chase. You know, oftentimes we only see a certain number of police <laughs> units behind uh, chases, but when we know that there are multiple people inside a car and also that they are armed, at least one person we know inside this car we do believe was armed, they are going to take every precautionary measure to make sure at the end of the chase, as we're looking at right now, uh, is a safe uh, situation for officers as well as other people who are involved in this, obviously, because of the fact that there are multiple people inside this car. Another level of danger mm -hmm. as he goes into a possibly this home here. We're going to show you on the inset box uh, when that car uh, started to lose control. But at the same time, we've got the very serious situation going on with that, we believe, armed driver who escaped and got on foot and then is now at this area here near, uh, I believe it's going to be Golden and Fort Street that he mentioned. And there's a community just off of the freeway. You see on the right hand part of your screen is when he lost control. But I haven't seen him since he turned around the corner. And we yeah. couldn't see him from the vantage point of the helicopter, but that would be a very dangerous situation, Susie, if he, we think, is armed with a gun, could sure. get inside one of those apartments or one of those buildings. With with the gun, you know, like you right. were saying. And um, Desmond, can we see from your shot? I know you've been kind of focusing on this apartment building where one of the suspects fled to, but have you been able to see whether the ground unit have been able to make any other arrests from that car? Uh, not yet. We mm -hmm. wanted to focus on the driver who came out uh, running here, and I do believe that those other two uh, stayed in the car. Mm -hmm. and everything happened so quickly. Mm -hmm. I think they just decided to surrender. We'll have to verify that later, but we wanted to try to stay with this suspect. Last we saw in this area, I uh, was underneath that awning. It took us a while to get around because uh, LAPD's helicopter may have seen them come through the shot. They are uh, on this one, so I believe they know where the suspect is. Does that go uh, down may below have gone the ground? Into one of you see, does that go down? Uh, is that yeah. subterranean there, Des? It looks like it is. Mm. Do you see that? Uh, I wonder, yeah, it, is it, that the last time we saw him was right there at, on the other side of that fence? Yeah, this is the last time that we saw. We'll continue to move around here mm -hmm. uh, and see, but um, unfortunately, just children's a, a toys. the lens there for... Yep. Yeah. You know, there and, could and be someone out here wanting, you know, what is yeah. the what is the commotion? I think I think the suspect saw us looking at him, and then that re really panicked him and got underneath uh, this awning, mm. and uh, unfortunately, just trying to to navigate with the other air traffic up here, uh, he had a couple of seconds to get away. So uh, we will see. Uh, not seeing any ground units uh, yet on this one either. But you see, LAPD's helicopter. Uh, I think they feel pretty good about him you know, being somewhere right here in this area. So it's just unclear if, if they went inside one of the, he would have had enough time if he went over that fence and up the staircase. Uh, if, you know, if, if this is the suspect that has a gun to p potentially force their way in, we're just, just not sure how this all uh, developed there when he was uh, away from the lens there for a couple of seconds. Yeah, I wonder, Mike, do you hear any chatter about what, what has happened so far? Yeah, so right now the officers are actually having trouble getting to the location because if you remember, he jumped off the side of the overpass yeah. there. So yeah. he had the benefit of being able to kind of take a direct path. This is actually Long First Beach unit. PD. This is not even LAPD, this is Long Beach PD. Those LAPD units, I'm listening to the airship, are still trying to get to this building. They're trying to get off the freeway to get around here to get to him. So, yeah. uh, you know, pretty behind the curve, unfortunately, as far as catching up with him. And they, you know, it was just a convenient spot for those guys to be able to wreck that car. But now you see uh, Long Beach PD showing up in force as well. Like Des mentioned, Sheriff's helicopter, and this is our first LAPD unit, that's from Central Division, uh, now showing up as well. So. We'll see. Uh, the airship was like, we're going we're gonna to keep an eye on this building, and yeah. you know they're going to try to set up a perimeter, but it didn't. Is that him on the balcony there, Des? Straight in? Well, there's somebody up there. I, I thought it was a resident. We saw somebody yeah. down below there. He was dressed in all black, yeah. um, and uh, he ah. looked pretty tired when he came around that corner there. Uh, what do you what do you think, Susie? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, hard to tell. There's so many boy, people out there right now. It's hard yeah. to tell whether these are people involved in the pursuit or perhaps just uh, looky looing. I don't know if people maybe you know saw uh, what was happening out there. Looks like that person getting to a I car. Come, come well, they're they're trying. Are they uh, trying to indicate to police, Des? Yeah, it's 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 hard to tell oh. here. Uh, we're just dealing with with some of these buildings and yeah, all these kind of 
these, these people scurrying all over the place here, waving, waving people down, why not see if they're if they're talking with yeah they're the, so here's police trying to you know set up their perimeter right now they are waving in police it certainly looked like they were waving them in here so all it takes is one of these suspects to avoid you know the the, the aircraft for five or ten seconds and it, it can just become incredibly difficult to determine where they I ended up I see a level of concern uh, I'm not right sure that there LAPD is confident I see a level of concern with those yeah. people right there. Uh, they, they appear to want police to come down. I wonder if they know where that suspect is. Maybe I, I that, would, I would guess, guess they do. That's my guess. Probably, you know, maybe guiding uh, police or hoping to guide police into where they believe the suspect uh, went. But it's unclear right now. Uh, I know the ground units are there, and I'm sure they're making a plan right now, setting up the perimeter as they do after pursuit. And it was difficult in this situation because, as Mike Rogers was talking about on the desk, when the pursuit came to an end, you know, everyone fled. Two people, at least we know, got out of the car and, you know, they jumped over that overpass. And officers, obviously, they don't want to put their officers in danger, obviously. And, you know, that's the reason why they took their car around to the other side to get to this location. But as Mike was saying, they did certainly have an advantage getting away from officers. Yeah, I'm the taking ground, a look at, at that yeah. on the right hand part of your screen. It's going to be what happened earlier. He kind of. He had been running for quite a bit, maybe mm -hmm. three or four blocks at full speed. It looked like he was uh, pretty winded. And then he, it, it, it did appear, Des, they looked like he hopped the fence right there. And that's where he went out of sight. Yeah, so re really quickly, I'm listening to some radio traffic. Des, they, they do believe he's on the second story of this building um, okay. that we were looking at. That's what they're talking about now. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. Uh, it, it looked like, you know, they, he, he might have hopped the fence, and that's how he <laughs> uh, escaped our gaze for a second, which leads to that staircase up to the second level. So, you know, did he force his way into one of these units, or was this uh, where they were trying to go? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, lost control there taking that off ramp, so it would be pretty serendipitous for them <laughs> to have lost control where he's trying to go. Um, so it, it's still anybody's guess at this point, but definitely a, a concern because we had reason to believe that you know one of the people in the car was armed and dangerous. Yeah. Let's bring you up to speed here real quick to all the uh, viewers here. As uh, we hit uh, just about 10 minutes after the hour, we got on just a few minutes for the top of the hour here with this latest pursuit of a assault with a deadly weapon suspect, armed robbery tied into a shooting in South L.A. at uh, St. Julian and Pico. Uh, these are obviously very violent offenders. Uh, they kind of uh, lost control of their SUV and kind of spun around on uh, one of the overpasses there. Two of those suspects, we believe there were three, stayed inside of the vehicle. We assume that they are in custody. And then this one driver hopped out and then ran, and then that's where we are now. Absolutely. And again, the danger tonight or the cautionary precaution, uh, precautions that officers are taking right now due to the fact that we know for a fact that at least one of these suspects are armed. So if one of them is armed, you don't know which one, obviously. And, you know, they have to take all the precautionary measures and set up a perimeter, make sure the residents are safe. You know, right now, the big concern is obviously this building who lives inside here. And if one of those suspects, you know, force their way into one of these units and and, you know, maybe had a gun and scared one of the residents there and said, you know, I'm going to stay here and, you know, maybe hold them hostage. We don't know. It at could this be point. a hostage situation. It, it could be a situation like that, which yep. we have also seen. So obviously um, they're going to draw their attention and focus on this building here and getting whoever out as safely as possible and getting to that suspect who is possibly armed. We yeah. see that time and time again where they in desperation run, mm -hmm. try to find an open door, mm -hmm. an unlocked door, some way to get in and hide. Sure. That certainly looked like that was the situation today, Mike. Yeah, well, in the airship, uh, just reiterating to the officers on the ground that he's very confident that the, they have this person in this perimeter. So not maybe necessarily in the building, but they're saying within the perimeter of this location. So they're pretty confident in that. And, you know, just to your point about where people run, it, when he was coming here, it didn't it didn't look like he really New. was making a beeline mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for one specific spot. He looked like he was kind of looking around trying to figure something out uh, and then he dipped around the uh, the back of the building there. But it looks like we see some movement in that door. I, I think that second door is open. It's ajar. If I it doesn't look like it, it. it looked like someone was there. So Des, what mm -hmm. do you see? Do you see any activity at all on the second level? Uh, I do see someone. It looks like like a pair of legs, but it looks like someone wearing shorts. And I, I'm pretty sure, if I recall, no, the suspect jeans. was yeah. wearing pants. He was all so. black. Yeah, right. Had jeans, so I, all black. Yeah. So, uh, but now the door is closing. 
Uh, there was someone on the bottom story that didn't have a shirt on who came out initially but was wondering what all the ruckus was about. Uh, looks like they've gone inside on that right, the, 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 the floor right below. I think that they still have their door open. But uh, yeah, LAPD was just is circling this building like a hawk. There they go, there go the skids of their helicopter through our shot again. So they do seem to be uh, very confident that this is where that suspect is. Um, they did get here pretty quickly. Uh, I think, looks like that door is propped open as well here near the end of the building. Kind of hard to tell. I mean, we could have a SWAT situation uh, here. On this one. We could have a SWAT situation uh, yeah, here, Des. I tell us a little likely. bit about what the protocol is that you believe that the police would next take here. Well, I mean, they're, they're probably not going to want to go door to door. I mean, it, it sounds like they, they think he's on the, on the second story. And if that's what they believe, then they may eventually come to some of the, the bottom floors and, and try to tell people to, to get out. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, again, if they think that, that this person has a gun, it, it just makes things very confident or, or rather complicated, I should say. They may just tell residents to shelter in place and uh, you know, if, if it is going to be a, a SWAT situation, then this, this could be an hours long process. Um, so they, they they would have to have just a very high degree of certainty, uh, you know, before they, they try going into any of these units, that's for sure. You know, we were talking about how there was a shooting involved in all of this before. We know little about that shooting, but as Mike Rogers at the desk was telling us, the shooting happened at St. Julian and Pico in South L.A. Uh, with a possible victim down. So if officers have that information, obviously they know that this person or people um, are capable of harming someone else with that weapon. And, of course, the big concern tonight, Mike, being this building and what could happen inside that building. Right, and I did hear them um, um, ask to hold the crime scene at St. Julian and Pico, so they're, they're still with that. I'm also listening to Long Beach PD coordinating this with LAPD, but I want to point out, and Des, I don't know if it's just, you know, incidental where they ended up, but the corner of that building, it looks like now that the sun's starting to go down a little bit to the left, uh, it looks like they've got their floodlights pointed at that top unit. I was looking at some of those police cars. so. I don't know if they have, you know, exact reason to believe that they're in that spot or if they're just pointing it at the building in general, but I did notice that there looks like there's some lights up there. Now, you also have to remember, we're now in a different city, so if this does turn into a SWAT situation or a SWAT call-out, which, by the way, the LAPD airship has already offered to give Metro a call, which Metro for the LAPD Metropolitan Division houses... the houses their K-9, houses their SWAT teams, all of that. So he's already offered to bring out Metro, so that decision is being made. But Long Beach police have their own SWAT, so you yeah. know, they could bring theirs out as well. Um, it just all depends on the, you know, how the different agencies are going to want to play along with each other. We have three scenes. I mean, think about the work that is ahead for all these officers. Yeah. We have the shooting at uh, St. Julian and Pico. That's in South L.A. We have the crash site, which is not too far from what you're looking at here. That's where those two suspects, we believe, uh, are in custody. That third suspect got out. And this is where he's holed up here in Long Beach now. So we have three different separate as we take a, a look here, panning back to where this accident occurred. Des, they're at least letting some traffic through that. It's an overpass. I thought that'd be shut down, but they're at least getting people over, aren't they? Yeah, and you know that that tells me that they got those other two yeah. suspects. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, this the, the 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 one that they got out. You know, I incredibly desperate here. You see, you know, jump down a, a pretty decent, uh, you know, distance right here. I mean, that's. That's at least, you know, 15 feet, I, I, I would imagine. So you know, probably a, a painful landing for that guy. And they came running all the way down here uh, to where we now have the perimeter set up at this uh, small apartment building. And so here's what Mike was talking about with, with the floodlights now on, on this side of the building. Mm -hmm. So if they believe that he made it over towards the end unit or, or what the deal is, I mean, the, you know, the, the, the door, it, it looks like it's getting kind of dark here. Let me see what I can do. But... Um, you know, it does look like, 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 like the screen door may be open here on on this unit, uh, second to the last. If if that's where they think uh, think the suspect is, mm. it's uh, yeah. This is this is probably going to turn into a long drawn out situation. I'm guessing at this point. Boy, if that was where he jumped off there, Susie, from that 10 or 12 foot wall, that was just adrenaline, and he might be injured. And I couldn't believe when you take a look at this as he's panning back to the crash site where he jumped off of and then ran for another, looks like two and a half blocks. That's a pretty good jump. It is. And I was thinking the same thing and I thought it was lower than that, but Me when too. Desmond gives us that picture, my goodness, it's pretty high, isn't it? 
I mean, it is an overpass, you know, a ramp uh, going to another location. So, I mean, it's definitely high up there. And obviously, that's why officers didn't want to chase them on foot because it would have been a very dangerous situation to jump over that fence for officers as well. Um, but just incredible to see this. But right now, as we're talking about this building being the focal point here of this investigation right now, uh, you know, we're meeting all the criteria for an LAPD uh, SWAT situation here. It, we have an armed barricaded suspect inside a building. We have uh, possibly um, a lot of, you know, tenants or residents inside this building as well, uh, you know, causing a, a dangerous situation, which could be a very dangerous situation. For the residents who live here who may or may not know what's happening around them. You know, Mike, I want to bring you in on this because uh, I would think if there was something going on that this guy had maybe somebody at gunpoint or there was some sort of immediate threat to somebody, police would get in there. But I would assume that they have information and that's why they're kind of holding back a little bit. Yeah, I would make that same, you know, uh, guess. I, I would say that if, if they had reason to believe that this person was imminently putting somebody in danger, they would make a pretty aggressive move to get in there. Um, I think the fact that they're not means they either just don't know and mm -hmm. they're just kind of, you know, because remember the officers on the ground saw nothing. You know, these officers got here well after the fact because of the, you know, geography basically of, of where this guy ran from. So you only have the airship overhead, which, you know, they did a great job of, of keeping him. And, and, you know, as Desmond mentioned, they're very lucky they were able to have the benefit of two helicopters in this situation yeah. because that's not common. It's not common that there are two helicopters over a pursuit. They just, you know, happened to have the resource of a sheriff's helicopter who could stay with the car mm -hmm. while LAPD came to the scene. Yeah, with extra eyes. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's so crucial. And I think it's an important time to tell, you know, uh, viewers, if you happen to be living inside this building or if you are in this building or near this building and you happen to make any observations of the suspect, then please call 911 right away. I'm sure that's what police would advise. Um, but right now it's, it's unclear what the uh, officers are doing down there right now in terms of what the plan is going to be, whether they evacuate this entire building first or if they'll have people shelter in place. Um, but certainly a dangerous situation if someone is armed in there. Yeah, this is in Long Beach. So we have three departments involved in this. LAPD with the initial pursuit. The Sheriff's Department got involved as well in route of this. And then Long Beach Police, of course, uh, on the left-hand part of your screen because this is the jurisdiction where this all ended up. So we've got uh, multiple agencies. We've got a number of different locations. We've got multiple suspects. This is going to be a long night, if not for one department, all three. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go back upstairs to Desmond Shaw in SkyCal to see if he has anything new for us. Desmond, are you seeing any movement from the officers on the ground there yet? No, not at all. They're they're out with weapons drawn, and, and this is you know probably a, a stance that they're going to be in for some time you know if this is going to evolve into a SWAT situation which it certainly seems like it's going to LA County Sheriff's deputies helicopter has left the scene so it's now just LAPD's helicopter that is over this and uh, we'll see how if uh, if they're gonna be sticking around this one for well for, for the duration now now here's someone peeking around and again this is where we saw someone that didn't have a shirt on come out and was just kind of uh, initially wondering what was going on uh, with their apartment building, but you, uh, you know, in, in that time that we didn't see when we last saw the suspect right over here up against the fence, um, you have to wonder because you know this door was already open. If they went inside that unit right here, it's kind of um, you know, there's we've got at least four, possibly eight. I think we have eight apartments here. Look at these these doors right next to each other, four on the bottom and four on top. So. Uh, but, you know, LAPD, they're not going to make an approach into this alleyway and be at kind of a strategic disadvantage if they believe that someone uh, has a gun. So this is one of those ones that could turn into a very long night, like you said, Jeff. So, Des, we are going to keep you in place there. Of course, we have uh, Mike Rogers on the assignment desk as we'll continue to monitor this situation. Police in pursuit of armed suspects, two in custody. One ran after crashing their vehicle and ran to this location in Long Beach on 4th and Melrose. We will continue to follow that story and bring you any updates, probably dip in throughout the newscast here at 8, 9, <coughs> and 10 o'clock on KCAL News as we continue to follow that story. Well, first we'll uh, bring you some other news. New tonight, 8 o'clock, police in Irvine are looking for this man who they say sexually 